So Ollie, since we last spoke, you were you were off to Croatia, uh, week's holiday, but you, you didn't manage the week, you, you, you couldn't, you had to get back to the yard. Yeah, no, I get itchy feet, so it was, so no, I, I did, did four days, four days was enough for me, and uh, came home and, and, and came back to Stratford Road a few runners, back to, back to normality. Perfect. And obviously since since we last spoke, you've had two winners. We've got Pie at Utoxeter and also um, Royal Plaza winning the, the selling hurdle at Stratford. We got Pie was sort of green throughout, but ended up doing quite nicely in the end. Yeah, and a big green type uh, surprised me a bit actually. Um, so uh, I'm sure he's going to improve dramatically for, for his experience. So he'll go back for a winner's bumper now in, in three weeks or a month's time and, and hopefully he'll see a different horse again. He's an exciting horse, and you've got lots of those horses that won bumpers and you know going not selling etc. This year, but he's he, he's he's another nice one to to go go along with the others. Yeah, most definitely. He was very very green, big raw baby. So uh, hopefully he'll uh, he'll improve improve uh, dramatically for his run. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to moving forward with him. And Royal Plaza won the selling hurdle at Stratford. And uh, he unfortunately he was he was bought at auction for eleven and a half thousand, but he, he did you well and he was always a bit of a dude to have around the yard. Yeah, I know he's done as well. He won two races, so best of luck to, to Katie Stevens who who bought him. Um he's always had plenty of fun with and uh you know he's done me well by winning me two races. And Machueca tried to defy a penalty in the three mile novice up at Perth, ran nicely, he was ended up beating um sort of quite a long way in the end by Port Rush Ted, but he'll probably be moving on to bigger and better things. But Machueca ran, ran a nice race. Um any plans for him next? Yeah, I suppose we'll just come back to back to uh, uh normality and uh, uh, and trying to take on something that Port Rush Ted has the ability of. Uh he's uh, he's a horse my lad who's who, who's limited and he's uh he's going to the sales at the end of the year so uh we'll try and another race for him and uh you know that'd be job done. Muller Boy ran well at, at uh, Banger in the two mile seven handicap hurdle. He was obviously second at twenty to run, ran a nice race. Yeah, ran a lovely race. Um I thought he'd win the whole way round actually so uh he was given a he was given a nice ride, so listen, he'll uh, he, he'll be winning again before too long, and uh, I'd say this the uh, step up and trip uh, worked wonders for him. And today you've got three runners at Newton Abbott, all sort of look like have having good chances. The mayor, Angela Harlem, Lewis Stone's rides claim seven, so she effectively runs off off the same sort of mark as she she did when finishing second at Subtle. Obviously, she won nicely first time for you at Market Raisin. What would her chances be like today? Yeah, I thought she had a good chance. This is it's a competitive handicap. I thought Dan's horse looked interesting in its first run with him, and Warren Greatrex's horse had had good form from Ireland. So, listen, I'd be hoping she'd run well. Now, I I still thought she had a had a few pound up her sleeve, and and she's freshened up and she seems really well at home. And Yen Sir runs in the novice hurdle, carrying a triple penalty, going for the four timer for you, twelve stone two under Richard Johnson. Obviously he's a little star for you, but what, what would his chances be like today? Yeah, big ask. Um, it looks two horse race between my horse and, and Becky Curtis's. Um, my lad's in good form. Obviously a, a, a triple penalty is, uh, it's not easy to, def to defy, um, but he seems very well and Richard Johnson gets on very well with him. So listen, I, I thought he'd win a race, let alone three. So whether he can win four, I don't know, but he's, uh, he's been a star. And I, I saw him in the field day, fresh, fresh running around, having a buck and a kick, and you know he, he looks looks really well for for the amount of racing he's had. Yeah, he is in good form. Um, he's done us all proud, and listen, if he could win, to find a to find a triple penalty under twelve two, I'd be delighted. You've also got the mare in the bumper, Doretti, direct. Yeah, she actually doesn't go too badly. Um, a, a kind of chappy kind of race, Dave Pipes horse, and. Uh, and Philip Hobbs's horse look interesting. Um, but my mare doesn't go too badly, and she, she's quite green and babyish. But uh, I'd be hopeful she should run very well. And going on further on in the week, obviously there's a ten day break in, in the jumps fixtures now. But you do have two runners at Yarmouth, mm. or potentially running both at Yarmouth. Ataman um, coming back from a break for you, and also uh, the mare Caragonair, who won last time on the flat, has also been disappointing over hurdles. Yeah, Ataman's having his first run back after a break, um, so whatever he does, he'll improve on uh, carrying an aim on reverting back to the flat after a few disappointing runs at the hurdles. So hopefully she brings back her bright and run and should have every chance, but I just hope she hasn't turned sour after getting a, getting a very hard race when she won in Brighton. 
And so far, Ollie, um, you've you've had sixteen winners. Um, you, you set a sort of loose target of trying to trying to get twenty by the time the sort of you know proper jump season starts in October. You, you started you you know last year first season you know as a trainer really really well, and you know it appears at the moment like you seem to be sort of backing up last year's form. Um, you know, having trained sixteen winners already, you must be happy with the, with the start you've had. Yeah, we've tipped away all summer. Um like how that's gone really through what we've been able to run uh so everyone's waiting for you to trip up in your your, your second year and not back up your, your your first good year but hopefully we've um we, we, we've started this season well and we've a lot of nice horses uh to run from the autumn onwards but uh if we could get another half dozen winners on the board now in the next kind of six or eight weeks before the proper winter horses coming out i'll be i'll be over the moon it just sets you a nice a, a nice target for, for, for what we uh what we achieved last year and obviously, when you started out last year, you know you started with a very small string, and, and you're up to you know sort of quite big numbers now, barns etc. Going up, but there, there has to be a huge thank go to the staff, and it, it all sort of works behind them as well. But also, we, we, we quite often don't end mention the the owners themselves, and you know they're the people that are actually paying the bills and going out and <coughs> when you purchase horses, you know buying them etc. And uh, you know must must be a huge thank to all the people that have supported you and you know come with your dad and people from Ireland etc. You know they they really supported you from from the start. Yeah, I've been amazingly lucky with, with, with who supported me since day one, really. Um, from starting out with half a dozen horses and little syndicates to, to people buying horses for six figures and, and, and buying nice store horses and form horses and bump winners and, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's, 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 I have too many people to thank and, and, and mention, but I've, um, I have some big supporters and I think we've had loads of fun in the first year and, and, and hopefully we've... Uh, We've done everyone proud uh, here at Warren Chase, from from staff to owners and uh, and whatnot. But uh, yeah, we're striving to improve the place and, and and up our quality. And I've got fantastic support from from everyone around me, from from staff to owners and and my mom and, and my mum and dad. So it's it's been great. And obviously, at the moment, Ollie, we're we're sort of you know halfway through a really really hot spell. You know, it's been been very very warm. It's been very you know. You know, there's there's very little rain fall. There's very little grass at, at, here at Warren Chase. You know, how are you finding it as a, as a trainer? I know sort of last week the likes of Philip Hyde was sort of almost giving up his license um, as to sort of how dry it was and how he was struggling with training horses in this heat. And then also, you know, the condition of the ground being so hard and the lack of uh, the growth in the grass. You know, how, how are you finding here at Warren Chase? Yeah, it's tough. Um, it's tough, but we're all in the same boat. Um, we're lucky we're training off synthetic surfaces and, and, and all weather surfaces, so that uh, that certainly helps. But I have a big team behind me, as we mentioned before, of, of staff, and everyone just gets stuck in and sticks together and, and gets things done. And it's just, unfortunately, it's the time of year at the moment, but everyone's in the same boat, and we're coping way fine. And, and don't you worry, it'll be a long and wet enough winter. So obviously, Ollie, thanks for your time today. Uh, good luck today at Newton Abbott and obviously good luck with your runners at Yarmouth in, in the week. And um, obviously it's, it's a quiet time for the jumps fixtures, but uh, we'll obviously catch up next week and we're going to sit down with a, with a few of the staff and a few of the jockeys over the next few weeks and look at the facilities as well. So lots, lots to look forward to. Lots to look forward to. Yeah, thanks very much.